Hi, Mark. My name is Amy, and my student number is forty-nine, and I am junior. And I'm going to read、uh, Patricia Medici, the coolest animal you know nothing about, and how we can save it. Filmed August two thousand fifteen at TED Fellows two thousand fifteen. Subtitles and transcript. Select language English. This is one of the most amazing animals on the face of the earth. This is a taper. Now this, this is a baby taper. <clears throat> the cutest animal offspring in the animal kingdom. Laughter, by far. There is no competition here. I have dedicated the past twenty years of my life to the research and converse, conservation of tapers in Brazil, and it has been absolutely amazing. But at the moment, I've been thinking really, really hard about the impact of my work. I've been questioning myself about the real contributions I have made for the conver- conservation of these animals I love so much. Am I being effective in safeguarding their survival? Am I doing enough? I guess the big question here is: Am I studying tapers and contributing to their conservation, or am I just documenting their extinction? The world is facing so many different conservation crises. We all know that. It's all over the news every day. Tropical forests and other ecosystems are being destroyed. Climate change. So many species on the brink of extinction: tigers, lions, elephants, rhinos, tapirs. <clears throat> This is the lowland tapir. The tapir species I work with, the largest terrestrial mammal of South America. They are massive. Massive. They are powerful. Adults can weigh up to three hundred kilos. That's half the size of a horse. They're so gorgeous. Tapirs are mostly found in tropical forests such as the Amazon, and they absolutely need large patches of habitat in order to find all the resources they need to pro- reproduce and survive. But their habitat is being destroyed. <clears throat> And they have been hunted out of several parts of their geographic distribution, and you see, this is very, very unfortunate because tapirs are extremely important for the habitats where they are found. They are her- herbivores. Fifty percent of their diet consists of fruit, and when they eat the fruit, they swallow the seeds, which they di- disperse throughout the habitat through their faces. Faces. They play this major role in shaping and maintaining the structure and diversity of the forest, and for that reason, tapirs are known as gardeners of the forest. Isn't that amazing? If you think about it, the extinction of tapirs would seriously affect biodiversity as a whole. I started my taper work in 1996. Still very young, fresh out of college, and it was a pioneer research and conservation program. At that point, we had nearly zero information about tapirs, mostly because they are so difficult to study. They are nocturnal, solitary, very elusive animals, and we got started getting very basic data about these animals. But what is that a conservationist does? Well, first we need data. We need field research. We need those long-term data sets to support conservation action. And I told you, tapirs are very hard to study, so we have to rely on indirect methods to study them. We have to capture and anesthetize, anesthetize them so that we can install GPS collars around their necks and follow their movements. Which is a technique used by many other conservationists around the world, and then we can gather information about how they use space, how they move through the landscape, what are their priority habitats, and so much more. Next, we must disseminate what we learn. We have to educate people about tapirs and how important these animals are, and it's amazing how many people around the world do not know what a tapir is. 
In fact, many people think this is a taper. Let me tell you, this is not a taper. Laughter. This is a giant ant eater. Tapers do not eat ants. Never, ever. And then next, we have to provide training, capacity building. It is our responsibility to prepare the conservationists of the future. We are losing several conservation battles, and we need more people doing what we do. And they need the skills, and they need a passion to do that. Ultimately, we cons conservationists, we must be able to apply our data, to apply our accumulated knowledge to support actual conservation action. Our first TAPER program took place in the Atlantic forest in the eastern part of Brazil, one of the most threatened bombs in the world. The destruction of the Atlantic forest began in the early 15, uh, 1505, oh, 15th when the Portuguese first arrived in Brazil, beginning European colonization in the eastern part of South America. This forest was almost completely clear of for timber, agriculture, cattle ranching, <clears throat> and the construction of cities. And today, only 7% of the Atlantic forest is still left standing. And tapers are found in very, very small, isolated, disconnected populations. In the Atlantic forest, we found out that tapers move through open areas of pasture land and agriculture going from one patch of forest to a patch of forest. So, our main approach in this region was to use our taper data to identify the potential places for the establishment of wildlife corridors in between those patches of forest reconnecting the habitat so that tapers and many other animals could across the landscape safely. And 12 years in the Atlantic Forest in 2008, we expanded our taper conservation efforts to the pan Pantano in the western part of Brazil near the border with Bolivia and the Paraguay. This is the largest continuous freshwater flood pan in the world. An incredible place and one of the most important strongholds for lowland tapers in South America. And working in the Panano has been extremely refreshing because we found large, healthy taper populations in the area. And we have been able to study tapers in the most natural conditions we'll ever find, very much free of threats. In the Pantano, besides the GPS colors, we are using another technique. Camera traps. This camera is equipped with a movement sensor and it photographs animals when they walk in front of it. So thanks to these amazing devices, we have been able to gather precious information about taper reproduction and social organization, which are very important pieces of the puzzle when you are trying to develop those conservation strategies. Now right now, 2015, we are expanding our work once again to the Brazilian Corredo, the open grasslands and short forests in the central part of Brazil. Today, this region is the very epicenter of economic development in my country, where nature habitat and wildlife populations are rapidly being er eradicated by several different threats, including once again cattle ranching, large cigar can and soybean plantations, poaching, roadkill, just to name a few. And somehow, tapers are still there, which gives me a lot of hope. But I have to say that starting this new program in the Colorado was a bit of a slap in the face. When you drive around and you find dead tapers along the highways and signs of tapers, wandering around in the middle of sugar can, sugar can plantations when, where they shouldn't be. And you talk to kids and they tell you that they know how taper meat tastes because their families poach and eat them. It really breaks your heart. The situation in the crater made me realize it gave me the sense of urgency. I am swimming against the tide. It made me realize that despite two decades of hard working trying to save these animals, 
We still have so much work to do if we are to prevent them from disappearing. We have to find ways to solve all these problems. We really do. And you know what? We really came to a point in the conservation world where we have to think out of the box. We have to be a lot more creative than we are right now. And I told you, roadkill is a big problem for tapers in the Garado, so we just came up with an idea of putting reflective stickers on the GPS color we put on the tapers. These are the same stickers used on big trucks to avoid collision. Tapers, across, uh, tapers cross the highways after dark, so the stickers will hopefully help drivers see this shining thing across, crossing the highway. And maybe they will slow down a little bit. For now, this is just a crazy idea. We don't know. We'll see it if it will reduce a amount of taper roadkill. But the point is, maybe this is the kind of stuff that needs to be done. And although I'm struggling with all these questions in my mind right now, I have a pact with tapers. I know in my heart that taper conservation is my cause. Is my cause. This is my passion. I'm not alone. I have this huge network of supporters behind me, and there's no way I'm ever going to stop. I will continue doing this, most probably for the rest of my life. And I'll keep doing this for Patricia, my namesake, one of the first tapers we captured and monitored in the Atlantic for many, many years ago. For Rita and her baby Vincent in the Pantano. And I'll keep doing this for Ted, a baby taper we captured in December last year also in the Pantano. And I will keep doing this for the hundreds of tapers that I've had the pleasure to meet over the years and the many others I know I will encounter in the future. These animals deserve to be cared for. They need me, they need us. And you know, we human beings deserve to live in a world where we can get out there and see the benefit from not only tapers, but all the other beautiful species now and in the future. Thank you so much. Applause.